Education is the foundation, and I'm here with my team, Victoria Fear, Jordan De Leon, and Alex Rosales, um, all of whom will be working together on the Community Grants Program. So I'm pleased to have this opportunity to do two things this morning. Um, for me to share the foundation's thinking behind the updates and mostly to answer your questions. So please feel free to send them in at any time. I'm going to go through my brief presentation and then we'll get to your questions. So um, this will be recorded for folks who were not able to make it or want to listen to it again. But this was really an opportunity to just go over the thinking that led to the guidelines that you'll see for 2018 for this new grants program. So I'm going to go to a slide that's titled Legacy and Evolution and give you just a snapshot background of how we got to now. As you know, 2015, sorry, 2017 was the 50th anniversary of the foundation. But we spent the year before that planning for how we would celebrate that milestone year. And a big part of the thinking was about how we wanted to frame the work we've done in the past and what we wanted to think about in terms of the direction for the future. And a key decision that we made in 2016 was that our anniversary year was not just be about reflecting on our past, but we really wanted to have a strong focus on forward thinking and our aspirations for the future. So that included all aspects of the foundation um, and looking at the community. We looked at our current fund holders and we looked at the kind of future prospects that we wanted to have and pursue in order to expand our resources in terms of what's available to the community. We looked at our grant making and the resources that we had and what we were doing across the foundation, not just the community grants program, because we manage about five other programs in addition to that, in addition to our civic leadership agenda. And we wanted to look at both what the current and future challenges was, was for our community. And in that case, we looked at the Our Miami report that we had been doing, and also just what we were learning through the grant making we were doing. So you have already have the guidelines, and I had drafted a letter to provide some context. So what I want to do now is go through the guidelines to draw your attention and highlight some things that we gave the most careful thought to in crafting the guidelines. So I'm going to start with framing the future and the theme. We started with that because with all the grant making the foundation does in all sorts of different areas, we wanted to find a better way to both define for ourselves and to convey the quality of life we strive to help make a reality for Greater Miami. Quality of life is very broad. We have programs that do all sorts of things. And so how would we tie those together? So we worked on coming up with the three themes that tied together pre-existing issues in the community grants program for which donors had already created endowments at the foundation and we've been doing grant making for years. We also wanted to tie it together with the civic leadership work we've been doing around sea level rise and transportation in particular so that we could really work with all of those through the community grants program. So I'm going to go through opportunity, resiliency, and creativity and highlight a few things from the guidelines and also um, help you understand you don't need to apply for everything. You'll select what best aligns with the work you do or the work you want to pursue. So we'll start with opportunity. And the, on the slide is a snapshot, I think, of the essence of what we are we're looking at in terms of how we define opportunity. And in the guidelines, we talk about enabling pathways to opportunity, that we do focus on residents who face greater barriers to success than others might, and developing their abilities and talents to overcome hardship 
achieve their potential and aspirations. And this idea of developing things, developing people's talents and abilities to help them overcome something and move forward was a key piece of the thinking that went into that as we talk about how do we advance, help people advance for the future. Under opportunity, there are three issues. They are the issues that have long been a part of the community grants program, well-being of children and youth, affordability and housing, and healthy lifestyles. So if you choose to apply to the opportunity category, you would select which one of those sub-issues your proposal relates to, and within that sub-issue, the proposal, your work needs to reflect one of the things listing at, listed after it. The idea is not that for well-being of children and youth, you have to do all of those things listed. Those are to reflect the breadth of work that probably fits into advancing the well-being of children and youth. The same applies to housing and affordability, I'm sorry, affordability and housing and healthy lifestyles. Affordability and housing focuses on both people's financial wherewithal, which really helps advance how are people able to afford to live in a city that has become one of the most expensive ones to live in in the United States. And a key piece of that is housing because that tends to be what people spend most of their income on. But they are really two discrete things and, a, and the work you do can either be looking at sort of the financial economics of a family or one of the things that relates to the actual housing, preventing homelessness, basic needs, and affordable housing options. So that's opportunity. Resiliency is new. Resiliency reflects the fact that for the past three years, the foundation has been working through our somewhat separate civic leadership agenda on the issues of sea level rise and transportation. That's been policy work, that's been adv advocacy work, and some limited separate grant making. But we wanted to bring that into the community grants program in order to make some of those resources available on an annual basis. Resiliency reflects two pieces. It's both the physical and infrastructure issues that we've long talked about, sea level rise and transportation, and sort of how we address our physical place infrastructure are, are, are one aspect. And broadening public education on sustaining our environment is the focus. So that is one aspect. The second aspect of a resilient community is how connected and how active people are. We've talked for a long time about how Greater Miami is fairly far down on the scale of 50 states in terms of civic engagement, and that that's something that's going to have to change for our community, both to address what it needs now, but also adapt to change in the future. So fostering civic engagement and action on critical social, economic, or physical challenges we face is the other option. And again, the work that you apply for can address either one of those two. I do want to be clear that this civic engagement piece is not tied only to issues that have to do with the physical environment and growth. That the focus is on building civic engagement and creating that culture broadly around critical issues. So the issue is secondary. It's the focus on how are we activating volunteerism? How are we activating advocacy on some issue that is vital to the community? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So that's resiliency. And creativity, which is essentially a new name and slightly rethink, rethinking of our what had been our arts and culture grant making. We have some limited funds, as you know, for arts and culture. And the definition that we have looked at is about using arts and culture toward the end of building a community. So it is not about simply the presentation or production of art, it's harnessing the power of arts and culture towards another end. So when you look at the guidelines, you'll see how we've defined 
the options for what you could be doing to use arts and culture in terms of building community. They speak about reviving community life or business activity in dormant areas of our city. As we think back to South Beach, those of us who've been here a long time, um, we're clear that it was an arts organization that really helped bring life back to Lincoln Road um, that eventually created the conditions for what we see today. We see the same thing in the area of Wynwood. We see the same thing in Little Haiti with what they've um, done with activities. So that is one example of how you could be using arts and culture. The issue of access, engaging people who typically lack access um, in experiencing the arts or developing their own artistic abilities. The emphasis being on people who typically lack access. Raising the profile of less visible cultures and issues. Arts is a great way of doing that, of shining a spotlight in a very sort of community building way on issues and cultures that may not get as much visibility. And then this idea of fostering connections and exchange among residents. There is the opportunity to go to just a performance, but what we're thinking about is how do you use that experience of a performance like how do you approach that what else do you add on that creates the opportunity for people to actually engage with each other as opposed to simply participating in watching the art so that's the summary of what the themes are the priorities that we've tweaked cut across all the themes. And that's where we really think about stressing this idea of how are we moving forward. The, the priorities of progress, innovation, and collaboration are what we will look for in proposals and pre-proposals to look for what's the strongest ones to move forward to the next stage that would be a full proposal. And in looking at a proposal, we're looking at both how it fits and the proposal in isolation, but obviously in any grant process where you're looking at a number of proposals, the decisions at the end often come down to relative strength of one proposal against another. So progress, they're I think fairly well defined in the way that we've laid them out, but they all focus on this idea of achieved improvements in the lives of our residents and communities. That's the forward focused piece. So progress is about helping people be better off now, but how are we preparing them better to succeed in their life in the future? So an example that I've used with my team is someone who may be homeless needs a place to stay. And so there may be shelter that is provided that addresses the current need. The question is, what's done during that time when that person is in a shelter that helps prepare them to better succeed moving forward, puts them in a better position, and hopefully not winding up back in the same place, but changes into incremental. It's the effort to not just shelter them, but figure out what can I do for this individual or these individuals that help prepare them to see, succeed better in the future. Innovation. Um, we left this line in. We don't mean a new program. We fully understand that asking a nonprofit to invent a new program every year um, undermines their capacity. This is really about organizations thinking carefully and looking carefully at what it is they're doing and what results they're achieving and constantly thinking about, is there a way to improve the approach to get even better results? Solutions-based approach. It doesn't necessarily require doing a new program. It may mean adding an element to a program that exists that based on past experience or best practices, you know, if we do this, we're probably gonna get the kind of progress that we're shooting for. And collaboration is really about leveraging relationships both for reach and to be effective. We all know resources are limited and um, learning that through relationships, 
it gives you to connect with individuals that you may not have access to, or some other organization may have an expertise. These don't have to be formal partnerships where there's necessarily resources and grants that are shared. It's the idea of nobody does anything alone. Everybody works best through relationships, and how are you leveraging those relationships um, to succeed? The questions literally near the priorities. The approach question is really about progress. It talks about what are you going to advance in terms of change. We have a specific question about innovation and a question about partners. And again, partners is about relationships. Don't think of that as, oh, I have a former partnership. That may be the case, but it may be that I'm working through this neighborhood association because they have access to a group of residents that I don't. Um, so those are the priorities, and again, when we look through the pre-proposal, we'll be looking most for organizations that reflect all three of those in whatever issue that they're addressing. We've kept the limits short because we really want organizations to spend time reflecting on not so much the work you do, everybody does good work, but the way in which you do your work and how it advances those priorities. Um, the last slide just has the nuts and bolts that are in the application. Um, certainly take a look at them and think of specific questions that you might want to ask. The only thing I would make of note is the question of eligibility, we know that there are organizations who are fiscally sponsored by the foundation. Those organizations are eligible to apply, um, as is an organization that might not be a 501c3, but has a separate 501c3 that serves as their fiscal agent. As with all of our programs, applying for one program does not prohibit you from applying to another. We look at them discreetly because they are really set up and designed by um, different fund holders, and we don't want to penalize one organization um, for getting a grant through one program and by not allowing them to apply for another. So that is the overview, and I'm going to stop there, and let's take a look at the questions that we have that I hope I can respond to. Sure. So before we dive into the questions, we'd like to invite you to type your questions into the questions box on the GoToWebinar uh, portal there, and we'll be answering them as we go. So the first question is, if my organization qualifies under multiple categories, even though I'm applying under only one, should I highlight how I fit within multiple categories? Um, that's a really good question, and the answer is the pre-proposal you submit should focus on what the story is you want to share about the work that you want the foundation to fund. And given the limited space, that's your opportunity to make your case around progress, innovation, and collaboration. And so if you can find space in there to share the other work, that as it relates to the work you are seeking support for, that's fine. Um, but again, you'll need to look at what the themes are and what the issues are and select the one that you feel your work most aligns with. That's going to be the way that you can make your best case. Okay, we had it. Uh, just a second. We have another question come in. Uh, will there be an emphasis on serving large numbers? Can a program that serves a small number in a really innovative way be competitive? Um, the question about large numbers versus small numbers is always one that comes up. I would again ask you to think about what is it that we are seeking to achieve? Your purpose and your measures of success are going to define whether you can do that in large numbers or whether you need to do that in small numbers. So if there, so for example, if a goal is to go into a place, a school, a neighborhood where lots of people don't have access to a certain thing. I'll just use arts and culture as an example. Um, there's a desert there or there's a food desert there. And lots of people, just getting lots of people aware of something 
your measure is going to be in numbers. If you're working to change people's behavior, your numbers are probably going to be in smaller. Um, so look at what it is you're trying to achieve and what's the level of intensity required and make your case based on what is it we're trying to achieve, how are we using what we've learned to do that better, and let that be your guide to how you make your best case. Another question that's come in uh, for the new category that involves the well-being of children and youth. Does this apply to young adults, specifically ages 18 to 24? So the question of age as it relates to well-being of children and youth, we have not had or written a specific cutoff point for what constitutes youth. Um, up to age 24, um, as a young adult, yes, it could be. So, for example, um, if if the tradition in the area that you're working in is a certain age group up to prime, um, school, for example, typically goes up to age 18. If you're working in um, foster care, there's years beyond 18 when larger services are typically provided, age 21, 24. So simply sharing um, what the age group is and up to age 24 uh, makes sense if there are particularly other resources you have that allow for larger amounts of money to serve that group. But I wouldn't go beyond 24. Another question for you. Uh, for organizations that have been funded by the Community Grants Program in the last cycle or two, does the Miami Foundation limit the number of times it will fund a particular project or collaboration? Um, so the number of times the foundation will fund. Again, to, to take advantage of the fact that there are lots of great organizations doing good work in the community. That's a big part of the reason why we've defined the priorities in the way we have. We're looking for organizations, particularly where innovation comes in, is if they're applying simply to do the same thing over and over again, the answer may be you may get funding one year at one level and you may not another year because some other organization is actually showing innovation. Um, but any organization who applies, even if they've gotten grants in the past, should always be thinking about, I don't necessarily need to change this, but I probably learned something last year that will help me achieve better results this year. So there is no limit on how many years we will fund, but we absolutely look at, are they growing? Are they, are, not are they growing, are they doing things in a way where they're clearly trying to find ways to achieve better results. Um, so that's, that's not a tweak in a program to make it look a little different, but it's some change that's tied to the goals that they want to achieve for the individuals they serve to help them move forward. So we had another question that I think you just answered, but just to repeat the question, and I do think you answered this, but they asked for more information on what you're looking for as it relates to innovation. But I think you just covered that piece, so if that person has a follow-up question, let us know. Um, I do want to address the question if people ask what you are looking for. So the guidelines are, we create guidelines because they express what we are looking for. There's not a hidden agenda behind this. I really do encourage, we're looking for organizations that are being thoughtful about progress, about how they are using what they've learned in the past to create better solutions for the goals they're trying to achieve for people. So there's not a magic formula for that. It's going to vary across the work that people do. But what we're looking for is organizations that present as they're thinking about these things, they're working on these things, and they're trying to move forward the organization and the community in ways that are constantly looking for, we know we can always do better for the people that we want to serve. How do we want to approach that this year? Uh, another question that's come up a few times. Uh, will the foundation focus more on smaller nonprofits this year as compared to previous years? 
we are, the foundation looks at all sizes of nonprofit. Um, and we, again, we look at the nonprofit relative to what our priorities are. There are things that large organizations do extremely well. There are things that they don't do as well and that small organizations do much better. Um, so again, for us, the question is not the size of the organization. A large organization is probably only going to be applying for a piece of what they do, but it still goes back to um, these questions of organizations who understand what they're trying to achieve and how they want to measure it and the other priorities that we've discussed. Um, we really try not to have large organizations be advantaged. I know that they have capacity and grant writers and all of that. But I think in starting this pre-proposal process with five questions that are about 250 words each also helps level the playing field a little bit, I hope, and that even small organizations don't feel like they need a grant writer to pursue, especially this first stage. Here's a related question to that. Can national organizations apply so long as they have a significant local impact? National organizations can apply, and yes, they need to have a significant local impact. I would say for them that the collaboration question becomes even more important. Um, who is it that they're working with on the ground to help them reach and serve folks who they want to reach and serve. One of the things that we found in working with national organizations is if they're coming in for the first time, this is not necessarily the easiest community to navigate and those relationships matter in order to get anything going. They may have sort of the expertise and um, that they've gained from a national level, but the relationship piece is really only going to happen through connections with local folks. So I hope that helps. Sure. Another question is about the subcategories under the main themes of opportunity, creativity, and resiliency. Do you recommend highlighting like multiple subcategories to strengthen or set apart the proposal, or is it better to focus on one specific goal within the theme? I would suggest I'm going to answer the question, and if it's still not clear, please send a follow-up. And I'm going to break these apart separately just because opportunity is a little bit different. Within opportunity, when you go online, you are going to need to select one of those three that's listed. You're going to need to select opportunity slash well-being of children and youth, opportunity slash housing affordability, opportunity slash healthy lifestyle. For resiliency, you will only select resiliency. For creativity, you will only select creativity. So that's what you will see when you go online. Now, let me go back to once you've made your selection. Let's say you selected opportunity well-being of children and youth. Your work can be addressing any of those issues or more than one. The same thing with housing affordability, healthy lifestyles. When you go to resiliency, you can be focusing on either broadening public education, on sustaining our environment around the physical issues, or you can focus on fostering civic engagement. Your best proposal is probably going to be one that gives you clarity of purpose. Um, who, who or what is it that you're trying to advance? I would suggest it is possible that for well-being of children and youth, maybe you do have a holistic program that addresses all of those. That's fine. But if you were just one that focuses on educational readiness, that's fine as well. Make your case around, again, what you think it addresses the priorities best. Can the foundation see what measurable improvement I'm trying to achieve for the people so they're better off now? and better off in the future. Um, how am I using my path to learn? And how am I leveraging relationships? So 
how you certainly you're going to have to select a singular issue, how much ground you cover under well-being of children, housing affordability, that depends on your organization's work. In resiliency, if you're you probably are going to select, you would only select both if you were doing both broadening public education on the physical environment and doing civic engagement around that issue. If you're not dealing with the civic environment, uh, sorry, if you're not dealing with the physical environment, you're probably going to focus your proposal only on civic engagement around youth or civic engagement around, you know, pick another issue. And in creativity, again, I think many of those are distinctly different. And it would be hard to, I think, effectively do all of them. But again, there is a possibility that under creativity, I have a project that's doing all of these things. Um, but you'll have to explain how you're measuring success and how you're moving things forward for the people you engage. I hope that clarifies, but if not, certainly follow up. Another question that has come in. Um, so they are a long-standing single-site organization uh, and that's had a successful program for a number of years. Would a pilot program to expand that program to other locations across the county in order to further, uh, in order to determine uh, further expansion for it, would that be considered? So, a long-standing site wants to pilot in a different location? Correct. Um, um, you're going to hear me keep referring back to the priorities, which is how we'll look at what he meant. If the expansion to a new site is somehow allowing you to achieve progress for people, so they're better off now, better prepared for the future, that's yes. If the expansion is also reflecting how you're building on your path to achieve better results, I think that's probably the most key because if it's simply a replication of what you're already doing, that's okay, but it should also reflect we're expanding and because of what we've learned in the expansion, here's how we're going to innovate and adapt, and then obviously the relationships question. So, I know that people have a lot of questions about, the questions are more about how do I structure my, the work that I do, but again, whatever you choose to submit, measure your response against those priorities and do your best to convey how whatever you're doing reflects those priorities, because that, those are what we're going to look at. If an organization is primarily run by volunteers and expanding quickly, can they focus their application on support for staff positions like a program director? Um, so the answer could be yes, but again, the focus, this proposal doesn't ask for what you want the money for. You need to talk about the work that your volunteer organization does and the community impact it's having. And as a way to achieve those priorities, it may be that you need staff. But if you write the proposal around just the idea of staff, we're not going to have a sense of how the work that you do um, achieves these priorities that would be enhanced by having other staff or having staff. So focus again, I keep going back to uh, in the full proposal, we would ask people about the, so how are you going to do it? Um, this is really about the threshold of looking at the work that you do, looking at what you want to do and what you're looking for support for and how it relates to the three priorities we've laid out. Great. So this is your last call for questions. As a reminder, this presentation will be recorded and available on our grant program page after the webinar. We should have it up by the end of the day, actually. So if you have colleagues that you'd like to forward this to, it will be available. So 
one last final call for questions, and if not, you can of course reach out to us via email afterwards. And again, I um, I do really, uh, we did put a great deal of thought into how we wanted to to frame the way we played things out. And I know that in a lot of applications, um, there's a lot more space for tell us the history of what you've done and, and um, to share more about what you do. We are really, we challenged ourselves as a foundation and we're encouraging nonprofits go think about what you do, but also how you do it, because how you do it is what drives the idea of people being better off now and moving forward. Are we learning from the past to be more effective in the future? And how are we using our relationships both to reach and serve people? Um, and present those as clearly, as concisely as you can. And that's what we'll be looking for. So we have a few more questions come in. <laughs> one such, uh, is it a disadvantage if programs focus on one day events that involve, the, that involve a lot of community development and the lead up to its execution? I'm sorry, can you read that again? Sure. Uh, so is it a disadvantage if a program focuses on a one day event that involves a lot of community development and the lead up to its execution as opposed to a program that goes for the course of the year, for example? The foundation typically does not fund an event that is sort of in isolation. Um, but I think as whoever wrote the question implies, there may be groundwork that goes into uh, the event is part of something else, right? It's, a, it's part of a greater body of work that may be being done in a community. Um, so again, if you were looking at even an event, I so go back to the question, what's the purpose as it relates to our priorities? If we're doing an event, how, what's, what issue is that advancing? How is it advancing a community or the lives of people? So if the event is, we'll take our arts um, scenario. <clears throat> if the proposal is for an event in a neighborhood that doesn't have any activity and something's never been done before, that has the effect of enlivening a community. Right, and so that the goal is not about the event. The goal is about we're using this to do something else. We're using this to enliven a community. We're using this to bring people together. Um, so think really hard about the purpose of what you're doing, and not just what you're doing. And again, if it fits into what we've laid out for the themes, and it fits into a priority, that event could be transformational. Because that's the intent. So I think we're on our final question, and this person has asked if we can provide any specific guiding, guide, guidance on the size of their request, especially relative to the total dollars of their grant project and the total dollars available with the guidelines, so up to $30,000. So the max is $30,000. That's a really hard question to answer because it goes back to the question that somebody asked about large organization versus small organization. Um, we've asked you for very general information. One of the things that we do ask for is under approach for who and how many. Um, and, you know, again, if for who and how many, depending on what you're doing, $30,000 may serve a small amount of people or may serve a large amount of people. It depends on what your goal is. Um, we prefer the one piece of guidance that I will give you is the foundation prefers not to be the sole funder of something, especially if it's a program. Projects within something maybe, but um, for a foundation or any funder to be the sole funder of something creates complications if it's something that somebody wants to sustain. We've asked for grant size and project size and organizational budget snapshots for 
exactly that reason. We want to get a snapshot. We know we're not allowing you to tell us what the money's going to be used for or that sort of thing. So we just want to get a sense of scale. So put in the amount that you think that you need to move forward the work that you want to advance. Focus on the questions that we ask. Um, and then at the second stage, for those who get there, there will be much more opportunity to share more information to put that in context. So There's a long-winded question of way of saying, you know, up to $30,000, think about what you're trying to do, think about the reasonable amount of money you need. That's the best guide to that. All right. Well, I think that we've been able to address all the questions that people submitted. Um, again, I'm glad to have had this opportunity to share with you the thinking and hopefully point you into the guidelines, uh, into point you to things in the guidelines around which we gave particular great thought. Um, and certainly Victoria's name is in the guidelines, but I think it, it's safe to say you can reach out to her or anyone on the team, um, Alex Rosales or Jordan De Leon. Um, to answer questions you have along the way. So thank you all very much. <laughs>